All right, so today's big idea is we've got this project that we've created so far, the comic book database. And we spent this while setting up a login and log out system. We set up a way to create an account, different people to create their own account. Well, we're at the point now where our project, we can start to deal with the database of it all. After all, this is an inventory system. And the inventory just happens to be comics, okay? A fun inventory thing to keep track of. So as we've done here, we've set up a way to save the name of the comic, its number, etc. And then eventually we're going to do scanning the barcode, taking a photo of the product, adding cool GPS features, for example. Well, so far, when you've gotten the project up to this point, this saving system doesn't really work. You click Save, and it seems to kind of, you know, go back to the beginning, or it asks you to uh, fill in the missing fields. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to set it up so that now we can actually start to save stuff to the database. As I've talked about before, we're going to use this cool database, which is self-contained. We don't need a server. Uh, to run this database, it can just run right off of the browser or off of the device, right? So I talked about it before. Anyone remember, what's this database that we're going to use in this project? PouchDB. PouchDB, that's right. So let's take a moment to go over to the PouchDB website to read a little bit more in detail. I've been teasing what this is for a while, and now we're actually going to use it. So go ahead and go to your web browser and we'll go to pouchdb.com. How many of you have kind of uh, taken a little peek at the Pouch website and read a little bit there? Anyone go to pouchdb.com? No? That's okay. We're going to look at it in detail more today. So we're going to cover pouchdb.com, <coughs> the database that syncs. So, a database ultimately is a way to store information, isn't it? There are four basic operations of any database. Saving the data, retrieving the data, editing the data, deleting the data. And that is something that we can do with PouchDB. You might have heard of other kinds of databases out there. Anyone have an opinion? What other kinds of databases might you have heard of? Mm -hmm. MySQL. MySQL, yes. Anything else? SQL. What's that? SQL. SQL, yes. Anything else? Maybe Oracle or um, Fox Pro, I guess, if you're being retro. Um, there's a lot of ways to save data to the database, right? To a database. But most of those ways require a server. You need to run MySQL, or MySQL or SQL. On a, on a server, you need Oracle, you need a special server to run Oracle. PouchDB can run right off of the device itself or also be replicated to a server. And it all runs with the syntax of JavaScript, so reading here. PouchDB is an open source JavaScript database inspired by Apache CouchDB that is designed to run well within the browser. PouchDB was created to help web developers build apps that work well offline as they do online. So um, that is, or that means that you've got your app and the person may or may not have internet access. Well, the project would still work even without internet access. Uh, usually we're always connected. We've got unlimited data plans, many of us, but sometimes we don't have. Um, an internet connection, so this works uh, as well uh, on, a, on an online as it does offline. Looking at this little snippet of code here, this is going to be reminiscent of things we've talked about. JavaScript. At the very beginning here, var. We're creating a variable. We're creating, creating an object called db. And we're instantiating a new instance of the pouch db object with its own name and then we have saving data to the database db.put we're gonna put data into the database we've got an object 
we've got a method, we're going to put data into the database. We have other methods here to keep track of any changes. Has something changed in the database? Has something changed in a particular document or record? Well, we can keep track of changes and, and do um, uh, listen for events. On the event of a change, do something else like run a function. And then even though it looks super simple here, and it's, it can be in theory, we have a way to replicate the data or store it on a server in the cloud. db.replicate to my server. So in theory, it could be pretty easy to take the data, which first starts off on the device, and copy it or replicate it to a server. When it's on a server, it's in the cloud, and then the data can travel with the person. Because this year, I love my phone and it's amazing, but next year suddenly it's old and, and janky and I need a new one. So I want to go to a new phone and I want to bring my data with me, this database that I'm creating. So when it's in the cloud, you're able to take your data with you when you transfer from phone to phone. So what we're going to be covering is the details. What we're going to be covering are the details of PouchDB, uh, how to set it up, how it works, uh, to apply it to our project, the comic book database, to start to save uh, this data to our database. The cool thing about PouchDB, like I said, it's open source, meaning you don't have to pay a license, you don't have to pay anyone to use this, uh, this library, this project, you just start using it in your projects and you've got a database. What's also cool is that the people behind it you know the global team behind pouch they are they're on Twitter they're accessible you can go ask them questions I myself have reached out to the developers of pouch ask them questions directly and they answer me back they are out there uh, pretty personable for you for kinda help they're not gonna of course troubleshoot your app for you but they're gonna guide you and explain how things are working or maybe what's not quite working in your project uh, so let's go over here to the guides at the top click guides there's the section of guides which is sort of like a starting point that I think is very good to to take a look at it really breaks it down in terms of what are common things I need to do there's also a screen of API's <laughs> which is more of the hardcore version of the documentation about how it all works. We're going to start with the guides first, and then we'll often be referring to the API. The API is the application programming interface. It's, the, it's like the hardcore way to, to, to code this stuff. So we'll start with the easy way first. And again, uh, we're not going to read every single one of these screens together. You should, you know, open this up. Uh, you have nothing to do. Read up on how Pouch works. Have a little bit of downtime. Go to the apps. Read up on it. Because you want to constantly be reading, practicing, and trying this stuff out. So PouchDB is a JavaScript implementation of CouchDB. Um, there's some good information about reading about how simply through the common web interfaces of HTTP uh, we can uh, access a database, um, create documents, retrieve them, edit, it, edit them, etc. And it synchronizes. So that'll make more sense as we actually do it. Uh, I'm going to jump over here to uh, let, let's jump over here to working with databases. You can re we'll do setting up in a moment, but just jump over to working with databases first. Pouch DB databases come in two flavors: local or remote. So local are databases that will exist within the actual device itself on this one device. Remote will be databases that exist on a server. We have here very easy to create a local database. You simply call new pouch and give it a name. 
So we create some sort of object with any name we want. It's calling it here simply DB database. We're creating a new instance of the pouch object and calling it something. So yeah, your database can be called anything, such as kittens. That'll work just fine. The documentation gives you a general explanation, gives you some good details, examples. So if I wanted to create a database on a server, well, you need a server, and that'll be something we'll talk about later. But you've got a server, and it's the same thing. Var, create a new variable, object db, new instance of pouch db on the server. And so we've created a database on the server. It's as easy as that, which assumes you have a server, which we'll talk about later. You can read up on that. And uh, we're going to see that we have, for example, a method of info. Give me the info of what this database is. We've got the object plus its method, in this case, then a callback function. What's the result of checking the info of the database? And you'll get some output that looks like this, which is in uh, JSON format, JavaScript, <coughs> JavaScript object notation. So this will make sense as we do it, but the big secret about Pouch and this like new generation of databases is that it would be what you would call a, um, a flat database. It's different from the classic relational databases in which you've got one uh, one table related to another table. It's all flat, so to speak. It's in a simpler sort of format that is very easily machine readable as well as human readable. We'll see the pros and cons of that. In short, it's a way to save data in a database. So um, we're going to use the usual um, development tools uh, to check the console output or to check the raw data in the database. And um, let's go over to working with documents, this next screen here. Pouch is a NoSQL database, meaning that you store unstructured documents rather than explicitly specifying a schema with rows, tables, and all of that. So here's a document. Here's one piece of data. Here's like one entry into the database. We have a field, so to speak, ID, a field name, a field occupation. So all of this is one document. It is one entry in the database. So name, mittens. Occupation, it's a kitten. Age, three. Hobbies. So then the, the syntax is a little bit different. There's three hobbies here. Playing with balls of yarn, chasing laser pointers, and looking very cute. So all of this encompasses one record in the database, like one user. Let's think about it in our terms for our app. We've got um, one comic, you know, Spider-Man number one. Well, we need to save the name of the comic, Spider-Man. We need to save the uh, issue number, number one. We need to save the year of the comic, num uh, 1963. Uh, we need to save, you know, a photo of the comic. All of those separate pieces of data are stored in one document. So just like this. And it's written in a very specific syntax, which is JSON format, J-S-O-N, which we will get very adept at, because this is uh, very commonly used in many projects online. So we can read about it right here. Now, at any point, obviously, Chris, if you'd like to wrap up at any point, let me know, of course. Oh, um... Can I get the students working on stuff? Yes. Um, we can start to write a little bit of code here. Let me... Um, okay, let's I mean, do I one... Don't wanna, I don't want to um, impose 
pause anything. And no, of course. You need to finish up. Nope, this is just like a quick intro. I think we can, right after we download this and set it up into the into our environment, we'll start actually doing some coding. So um, the documentation here, you definitely want to read it on your own, and we can get started pretty fast uh, to actually start to save data. But do you get the idea here that we're going to bundle these separate pieces of information as one document? and store it into our database. Any any questions so far in general? Kind of how this works? The idea? Seems easy and it is pretty easy. Yes? How much of actual storage do you get on? The storage that we have here depends on the device uh, but usually at a minimum around 5 megabytes. Now for uh, the data that we'll be saving here, that's plenty because it's all going to be text-based. Even when we deal with photos and such, we're not saving the raw photo data in the database. We're saving a reference to the photo on the memory card. So depending on the device, between 5 megabytes to like 250 megabytes, so plenty of space, and we can create multiple databases. So if one fills up, we create another one to keep storing the data. So to actually start using it, let's jump back really fast over to setting up PouchDB. <clears throat> All we need to do to get started is add a script tag into our code referencing the JavaScript library. So you see there's a big old download button at the top, right? Go ahead and click the download button. That's going to download a JavaScript file put that JavaScript file in your scripts folder in your project in Visual Studio and then we'll write this to to connect it and we can start using pouch right away so go ahead and click download which of these two do you think we want the minified version that's right so we want the compressed production version, so you want pouchdb643.min.js. Go ahead and click there. That's going to download somewhere, probably to the desktop or something. Uh, in my case, it says, oh, be careful, here's a JavaScript file. Go ahead and click Keep. If it pops up about, what do you want to do with this file? You want to, of course, save it, of <coughs> course, keep it. Mine ends up on the, de on the desktop. So. Copy that JavaScript file over to your uh, project folder. So in my case, it downloaded to the desktop. I'm going to copy this over to my WW folder in the scripts folder. The documentation tells us in order for us to use PouchDB, we need to reference it in our code. So that's going to be a simple script tag that we add to our code. So make sure you've copied that pouch file into Visual Studio. And then we'll open up our index.html file. And we're going to connect the index.html file to that JavaScript file. So you should have your PouchDB library in your scripts folder. Go ahead and open up index file. And then we're going to connect the index file to that library. This library is similar to jQuery or jQuery mobile in terms of it's a collection of shortcuts, sort of. It's a file that gives us a way to quickly create <coughs> things. Um, and uh, we just need to connect to the file first. So in the index HTML, let's go all the way to the end of the document. And let's say we will add this in line 206. 
So we're saying, first, of course, let's load up jQuery. We're going to load up jQuery Mobile. We're going to load up Cordova so that we have the ability to use all those cool Cordova features. Then we've got platform-specific code, and we've got custom JavaScript. So between those, we're going to add our link over to Pouch. So let's go ahead then and add our script tag. Script source. Remember to use the helpers right here that pop up so that you don't mistype it. Script inside of um, the scripts folder, you should see your pouch db file. You're going to close the script tag. So here we've added the library. We're able to start to use the, um, the library. Once you add that link in the index file, let's go over to the um, uh, index.js file and let's create our first database. So inside of index.js, let's go down to line. Let's go to line um, about 191 or so. Remember, we've got our event listeners at the end. I'm going to make a kind of a little, uh, I'm going to make a comment here uh, just to delineate pouch DB code. something like this to uh, to mark for ourselves here's where the pouch code starts and so far we've got about 200 lines of code and this uh, pouch stuff is probably gonna add another um, 300 lines or so um, so remember we said we're gonna have about 700 lines of code um, for the whole part of the JavaScript so it's good to, I would say, uh, to make a kind of a little comment for yourself here uh, that all that pouch stuff starts and ends here. Okay, so let's comment, create a new database locally. This database we're about to create will exist within uh, the device itself. And we saw that the syntax is very straightforward. So, var to start to create the new object. And just to keep um, consistent with the um, documentation, we'll just call our database db. We'll call our object that stores the database simply db. It's going to be our database equal to keyword new we're going to create a new instance of a type of object because in our HTML file we can <coughs> we connect it over to the JavaScript library we're able to use the object pouch DB notice how it's spelled very specifically capital D capital B We're about to create a new uh, object db of type pouch db. Here we 
we, um, in quotes, we give it the internal name of the database. No one will ever see this. You can call this whatever you want. So internally, uh, let's call this my comics. As we usually do to kind of get a little bit of feedback, if this stuff is working, we'll do a little console output. So console.log db. This is enough for us to test the project on your device or simulator. This is enough for us to see, did we type all of this correctly so far? Are we on the right track? Go ahead and run it. Go ahead and save everything. And then run it either on your simulator or on your real device. And let's take a look at our console output to see what we get as feedback creating this, uh, creating this database. I'm going to run this on my device. And then you can take a quick look at uh, your console output. I forgot to check the size of it, but I think the JavaScript, <clears throat> this library, is only just about another 100 kilobytes or so. It's not that big of a footprint to add to your project. And when it's all um, finally compressed for final production, it'll get a little smaller as well. So not too much overhead to add this great new feature um, saving to a database.
database so that we can actually use it. One quick little thing, if anyone wants any of these, uh, this is our like, uh, let's get social, this little button here that tells you where you can go, this video and stuff, you can go watch it over here and our other items of uh, social media. So if you want one of these, they're going to be right up here. Um, so you can go check out where the video is going to end up. The whole point of what we're doing here about running this project is I simply want to see if I've got some uh, feedback if the database is on track. Now either you can look at your output here in Visual Studio or uh, sometimes it also is useful looking at the output um, in Google Chrome. So in my case I was running the um, I was running the project off of my device and remember that in Chrome it could be useful to open up the developer tools remember F12 and then inside of the developer tools you can go to the three dot menu more tools and then remote devices so here's another place that's really gonna help us to debug all of this we're gonna get into a phase where writing this code for the database a lot of little things could go wrong so also looking at it this way is very helpful so remote device I see that my device is right there, the XT1528. And uh, when I click on it, I can inspect. For some of you, you cannot inspect if Visual Studio is also simulating it. In my case, it looks like I can click inspect and it does pop up. But for a few of you, when you click inspect, nothing happens. So you might want to go back to Visual Studio and say stop debugging and then go back to the uh, Chrome and click inspect and it should see your device so one of the things we're trying to do here in this debugging screen did any errors happen? Uh, is it saying file missing or unknown type pouch DB? That's just basically the thing I'm trying to check right now. Uh, what could go wrong here is I've got console.log DB and notice no quotes. If you put it in quotes, that's different than what I've got here. Uh, here I'm saying show me information so to speak about the database if I put that in quotes the output will simply say DB that's not exactly what I'm looking for so no quotes what I see here is in my case it says object JE when I open that see there's a little triangle it shows me the object JE and I open that and it's got all of this stuff here object index database my comics there's the name so if you do see some kind of output like that where it says there is some object in my case <coughs> line 196 it's working fine if it only says DB 
it might not quite be working. You want to make sure you have console log with no quotes. So um, what we've got here is we've created a database. And we can also see the details of it in various ways. So let's talk for a moment about simply making sure that this is all set up properly. Then we'll start to actually save content. So let's do this. Just so that we're all looking at the exact same thing. Select your simulator. Simulate in browser LG G5. Go ahead and run this project in the simulator of LG G5, just so that I show you all the exact same thing. Because what I want to do is, here in the, in the Google Chrome browser, hit F12. You get the uh, developer's tools. And then go to the tab application. So we looked at this tab before when we dealt with local storage. You'll still see it here. Local storage. Local storage in the device. We've got the the user <coughs> account and is logged in. So we've seen that before. But now there's a new item here under indexed db pouch my comics so local storage is one way to save data session storage index db web sql and cookies so you should see another way to make sure this is working in chrome here under index db you should see underscore pouch and whatever you called your database right here when you when you wrote here new pouch db my comics so you should see that right there there's a database pouch my comics if you then further open that up there's all of these different ways to view the data in the database. For example, by sequence, there's no data in the database. All of these are going to be empty. But you should see inside of IndexedDB, you've got pouch. You should also be able to use this to confirm that it works off of the device. So again, if I'm running this off of my device you can go over to the more options more tools remote devices you can connect to your device and inspect the project and for some reason for mine it's not loading up here but at the very least I do see it that it's in the simulator So let me just do a quick pause right there. Does, um, does anyone need any help? Do you see that you've got that pouch DV showing up in the browser? If you don't have that, uh, nothing else will work after this. So make sure this, this is working at least.
All right, so at the very least here, we have a little bit of feedback that, okay, we've got a database. Now, let's backtrack a little bit back to the documentation to see how it works. We started to see, back on the documentation on the Pouch website, uh, if you go back to working with documents, we have the ability now to start saving this data. This is one document. This is an example of one user, let's say. This user, mittens, name, kitten occupation, age three, etc. That's all one record, so to speak. It's one document. The terminology is document. This one record is a document. This document includes any number of fields that we want. A field of name, occupation, age, hobbies, color, etc. We can make as many fields as we want for these documents. Um, and uh, the only thing is that if you uh, look at it in another example, let's see, do they have another example elsewhere? The only requirement of these fields is that you have one special field called underscore ID. So underscore ID is what will differentiate this document from every other document in your database. So there's one special field that every document must have, and it must be unique. So only one kitten in our kitten database here can be called mittens. Now, if there's two kittens called mittens, we need a way to have, you know, mittens one, mittens two. Because only one thing in the database can have this ID. Although 50 things can have a name, mittens. But only one thing in the database can have an underscore ID, mittens. Uppercase and lowercase matters. So technically, you can have uppercase mittens, lowercase mittens, and it's two different kittens. But this ID is a very important field when we save our data. And notice the way that it's serialized, or the sequence of it. We have these curly braces. Then we've got in double quotes the name of the field, colon, the data connected to that field, comma, the next field, name, in double quotes, colon, the data, comma, the next one, the next one. That one's not in quotes because it's a number. All of these that are in quotes are strings, and a string is different than a number data type. And here we've got, we've got the field of age, so double quotes, the name of the field, colon, the data. A, uh, a key and a value, comma, 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 until the last one, no comma. So this is JSON format, JavaScript object notation. All of this together is a JavaScript object. It's in curly braces. It has a key and a value pair separated by commas, uh, colons, all the way to the last one, no final comma. Then we've got an array over here, so we can get fancy. But in our case, we're going to do something like this eventually. Underscore ID with a unique name, Spider-Man 1. Name of the comic, Spider-Man, comma. Issue number, 1, comma. Year, colon, 1963, comma. Photo, colon, a path to the photo, comma. 
So this is the format that our data is going to be stored internally, how we're going to write the data to the database, how we would retrieve the data, how it shows it to you, that is, after you retrieve it. There's a cool little chart here. If you've got experience in classic databases of the SQL variety, these are some names in SQL and some names in the pouch world. So there's tables in um, classic databases. There's no actual equivalent of tables in this modern NoSQL style. Pouch is not the only one of this kind of database. There's PouchDB, CouchDB, MongoDB, there's a bunch of these other ones like new generation of databases and the big idea is they don't need a server. That's a big detriment sometimes about setting this stuff up. You need a server, you need infrastructure and all of that. Well this new generation of databases it runs right off of the device with less overhead. But the difference is there's for example no concept of a table. I think the closest is that you can create different um, you know, these different um, objects in this way, you can sort of think about it as that's the whole table itself. And you can create another one, var, you know, var names equals new pouch DB, var years equals new pouch DB. So you can sort of do that, but that's not quite the style of this new type of database. You have rows of data, which in pouch is a document. So everything up there would have been a row in the um, classic databases. A column, like the name or the um, uh, or the age and such, here would be a field. So it's these fields here: age, occupation, etc. You've got a primary key in both. And here it has to specifically be the one special field or column, underscore ID. Has to be underscore, has to be ID, lowercase. And then an index is a view of the data. So notice what they've got here. They've got all of these separate fields bundled into one object, doc. And then into the database, we do db.put that doc into the <coughs> database. Just for a little bit of practice, we'll do this. We'll play with something like this. We'll put it into the database. Then we'll put like real data, the data that we're asking for in that input form. But for the moment, we'll just play with some raw data. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Actually, before that, does any questions sort of on what we're kind of looking at here? It makes more sense as we do it, but general questions. Let's try it. Uh, if you're simulating, go ahead and stop the simulator and let's go back to our index.js. After that console output line 199 or so, let's create a new variable and let's call it a comic book equal to. This is going to be one comic book. This is a comic book. We're going to save into the database my comics. And the syntax is open, close, curly brace, semicolon. All of those various fields must be encompassed in curly braces. And say example of a document we're saving to pouch. This is one document. It's in JSON format, which is JavaScript object notation. key value pairs in double quotes separated by commas until the final 
key value pair. No final comma. So just simply for readability, it's often standard practice to separate this into multiple lines. We've seen curly braces before, so don't write this, but we've seen function, my function, parentheses, curly braces, and we have those curly braces separated. Don't write this. But we've seen this before, curly braces related to creating a function. The syntax here is that these curly braces are just sort of ghostly floating by themselves. They're not really attached to anything. But that's JSON format. It's curly braces, they open and close, and then there's data inside of it. All of that, you can think about it like a bundle of data. I'm going to separate those into multiple lines. And then basically here we have our key and value pairs this sort of field and the data in the field. We have to use double quotes. And we have to use underscore ID as the first field, as the unique field. So we'll say example 1. I want another field, comma, next thing. Let's just say here then, uh, this comic book, as I said, uh, we're going to have um, comic name, colon, quotes, Superman, comma, comic number. Colon. In this case, no quotes, because I want it as actual numeric data. Quotes number one is different than no quotes number one. Um, one is a numeric data type, and one is a string data type. And then the last thing, comic year. no final comma. No comments in the data object. The only thing that should be in this object is the data, meaning I should not put the comment code anywhere here to give myself a comment. It's going to mess up the data. You want your comment, comment before or after your data. You don't want to put comments in the actual data. It's, it's not the right syntax. It's not expecting comments. It's just expecting fields and data, key and value data. So we've basically bundled all of this data together as one object. We're going to put that data into the database. And those that developed the PouchDB standard made it very easy. DB object dot put. We're going to put data into the database, specifically a comic book. All of this separate data bundled as one object, put it into the database. Put the bundle of data in 
into the database, into pouch. So as I said, we're going to need to, as we debug this, um, the Visual Studio console will, will give you feedback if we specifically say console.log. But also, the Google Chrome browser, remember, it's got that tab, application, show me the, the, the raw data. So we'll do two things. Uh, we'll say again console.log db and also you need to look inside of the F12 developers tools to see how it has updated the data. So I'm saying the exact same command again but the last time that I wrote it the database was empty because this is sequential. Now we've actually put data into the database. I want to see the database again. Save all of these files Go ahead then and run it in the simulator or the real device. Check for your console output, see how it's different than before. But also go to the Google Chrome developer tools screen and look at that screen again where it says index DB. There should be new data in that database viewer. So in my case, I'm going to run it on the simulator. Remember the shortcut F5 to run to your device or simulator from from Visual Studio you can press F5 Visual Studio tells me here my first output line 196 was before I put data into the database and then output to, uh, again line 212 after I put data so you can open those triangles to view the differences. In Google Chrome, you might get better results, F12, and switch over to Application. Index DB, My Comics. Look at the data by sequence. I've got one new object in the database. You can open this to view the data you just saved. There's the comic name that I wrote, the comic number, the comic year, and something called doc ID rev. We'll, I'll cover that in a moment. But you should see something like this, no errors. I am going to see this error about file not found, fav icon again. Just ignore that. But if it doesn't give you what you expect, we need to fix that. But you should see in the application viewer, in the index DB storage area, you should see pouch deep pouch my comics and then inside of that view the data by sequence I've got one object saved into the database anyone having any trouble with that doesn't doesn't work anyone need a little help Just to practice a little bit more, I'm going to add another comic to the database. Yes. Doesn't work? OK, I'll be there one moment. Let me just do this. Let's add one more comic to the database. Same sort of idea. Um, on this line, we created a comic. We filled it with this data. We put it into the database. We can reuse that same object, but with new data. 
next line after that console, the name of the object, a comic book, equal to quotes, I'm sorry, equal to curly braces, and then write different things here. Quotes, underscore ID, colon, quotes, example two, comma, quotes, comic name, colon, to Batman, comma. Now make sure you've got commas and the end of all of these lines except the last one. Next line, comic number, in quotes, colon, to number one, comma. Next one, comic year. I think that was 1939. No final comma. Now, I didn't need the VAR at the beginning because I'm not creating a new variable. I'm reusing the previous variable, the previous object. I'm just rewriting what was inside of the variable. I'm putting that it's a new object, a new ID in the database. So do not write example one anymore. That's going to try to change what was it example one before. We're not there yet. The same field, comic name, make sure you spell it the same. But a new piece of data in that field, comma. The same comic number field as before, it's also number one. Comic year, same field, but new data, 1939. Well, if that defines the data, we need to put it into the database again. So very easily here, db.put a comic book. Save it, run it, check the application screen, and now you should have two things in the database. The first one of example one, and the second of example two. Two, piece, two separate pieces of data in the database, using the same fields, but with unique data to each of them. <coughs> Let me confirm mine works, and then I'll answer questions. So I'm going to run it in the browser, F12. I'll look at application, index DB, my comics, by sequence, and I see here the zeroth item of the database the first item of the database. The first object is the Superman comic. The second object is the Batman comic. And if you notice right here, the unique ID is right here. Example 1, example 2. This is the code right here so far. Let me pause here for a moment. Make sure, uh, make sure that you're seeing some output there, and, and we'll go on. Yeah, this is 
So would that might be an issue. Before the time is I tell you that the case in the neuron this might not be new enough. So that the chrome All right, everyone, let's go on. We're going to take a break in just a moment. The big idea that's happening here, you should be seeing, is we've got this data that we're bundling as an object. So we have these particular fields that we first created and then reused. This is a great thing about something like Pouch or the modern databases of NoSQL style in that you have all of these fields that you can create and use dynamically. And it's all bundled together as one object. And then in our case, simply put. Uh, we can get the data back out of the database. So we'll do that, then we'll take a break. We've already saved two things into the database. Well, if you go back to the documentation, we have, OK, working with documents, storing a document. And as we go look down here further, now we can get a document. So to retrieve a document, it's right there. To put a document, db.put. And then it's the document. It's the object. OK, well, to get a document, now let's get the document by using its ID. So this example code here, db.get, the name of the data by its underscore ID, then run a function where we do console log output. So if you've got this open, you can do copy and paste. If you don't have it open, let me copy it and paste it, and then we can see it in the code. Um, we put two comics, next line, db.get, and you've got two possible IDs to, to choose from. Right? We've got example two and example one. So in here we've got quotes example one. So we're putting two comics into the database. We're going to get one of the comics, and we reference it by its ID, underscore ID. 
then we call a function based on the doc. Let's make it maybe more obvious right here. Instead of doc, let's put data. OK, well, we're trying to get a document out of the database with a unique ID. After we do that, then what we're doing is with this data, we're going to put it to the console. So when, when I had the moment, the example a moment ago, I called it doc. But you see, this doesn't matter. This could be, you know, happy, as long as this is called the same thing. The data is temporarily called happy. Therefore, in the console log, put the happy data. So these things could be called anything. The example called it doc, but I think it kind of makes a little more sense to temporarily call it data. You know, the data comes back out of the operation of get. We're getting the data out of the database. We're calling it data, and we're console logging it out. Go ahead and save it and run it. We'll, we'll look in your console to see what you get out of it. And then we'll take a break. If it worked, we're on the right track. If it didn't, I'm going to put my code in the network folder up to this point. So you can take a quick look at it, and we'll do a little <clears> bit of help. It's about 7.45-ish. We'll take a break until 7.55, and then we'll go on.